Imagine that person you talk to on the phone who only calls to complain or ask for something constantly pouring out words, always about themselves and never about you. You can't get a word in, and then they simply say, okay, bye, and hang up. In Matthew 6 verses 7 to 8, we read, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. I believe that's how God sometimes feels when we pray. If you are like me, your prayers might fall into four categories. Either they are dry and bland like a piece of old bread, or we repeat the same things incessantly like a scratched record, or we treat God like a giant vending machine in the sky where we insert something and expect to receive something in return. Or worse, prayer becomes the most annoying and obligatory task possible, like vacuuming the entire house on a scorching day. You can always try to make their prayers very spiritual when in reality they are not. Let your patient try to evoke feelings without words and words without meaning and not allow the patient to realize that he is trying to produce faith by the sheer effort of the will. When all efforts fail, you can still manipulate the patient's mind into thinking he is much more spiritual than he really is if you can get him to abandon the effort of prayer altogether. Whatever the situation, we often stop praying, and when we stop praying, it's like we stop watering a plant, our faith withers. I would like to share some thoughts and techniques I've learned along the way which have helped me escape these traps and deepen my prayer life. I won't offer just a beautiful definition of prayer, for I truly don't believe it can be captured with words alone. Instead, I'll give you an image. For me, prayer is the mutual pouring of one heart into another until both become one. There are three essential ingredients to make prayer prayer. If any of these are missing, your entire prayer crumbles. I call them PHT. Have you ever been alone in a room, perhaps waiting for something, and another person enters the room? You might not see this person, maybe they enter from behind you, but you are aware of their presence. This is the starting point of all prayer, the awareness of another person's presence in the room. Otherwise, we are just talking to ourselves in the dark. The best phrase I have ever heard about prayer, and of course, I don't remember who wrote it, was, God hears our hearts, not our words. I'll repeat that, God hears our hearts, not our words. So please, let's forget about whether we're saying the right thing or using the right words and get straight to the point, what is happening in my heart? If we can speak from the heart, we can speak the language of God. In 1 Samuel 16 verse 7, it is written, but the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Imagine if we reverse this, we need to learn to listen to God's heart within our own, not through words, feelings, or signs, but through subtle and delicate inspirations or movements within our being. Those moments of clarity in the soul. If you are finding value in this video, like the video, subscribe, and drop a comment. If you don't know what to say, just say. Thank you God. In Romans 8 verses 26 to 27, we read. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. When we master this delicate language of the heart, we are indeed conversing with God. Now, bear with me. Remember those old diving suits where the diver depended entirely on the operator on the surface to pump air? If the diver wanted to ascend, he would tug the rope and wait for the operator to notice and pull him up. The point is, if you are the diver, you trust your entire life in the operator's hands. Even your next breath depends on him. Similarly, but much more profoundly, we need to have this radical trust in God, even for our next breath. And here's the difference, it is not just some operator at the top, it is the God of the universe who loves us in an incomprehensible way. Consider these words, the entire universe before the Lord is like a grain of sand, a drop of morning dew. Not a single sparrow falls to the ground without God knowing, and even the hairs on your head are numbered. Therefore, do not be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. Yes, I paraphrased. It is in this presence to whom I pour out my whole heart, to whom I trust my next breath, it is crucial to prepare before praying, because remember, we are in the presence of the God of the universe. To the extent that we make ourselves present to God, He makes Himself present to us. Think about that. I like to find a quiet and dark place with my feet on the ground, palms open, ready to receive. Posture is important, because our body manifests our soul. If our body is open, our soul is open. Our heart or our soul is spiritual. This is the door to the spiritual, where we will find God. 
Prayer, in the sense of requesting, is not what matters, prayer, in the sense of lifting the mind and heart to God, is what counts. So the first thing to do is enter that inner room, our heart, and close the doors to everything else. Let's start with a simple technique to relieve stress. Focus on all the noise in your mind, the accumulated stress in your stomach, anything that is weighing on you. Imagine all of this as red smoke gathering in the center of your chest. Keep breathing deeply and exhaling all the smoke, focusing on your breath and imagining the smoke passing through your lips. Next, visualize the room you are in, the environment around you, the chair you are sitting in, even your own body disappearing. The world around you ceases to exist, and with it, all your worries fade away. Only your heart remains in a vast emptiness. Now, invite God to enter. Just as we notice when someone enters a room, feel the Divine Presence. As it says in Psalm 46 verse 1, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. And this is crucial, it's not about feeling something, but about knowing and trusting. Here, there are no words, our mind is silent. It's just my heart and his, nothing else. We can simply stay here forever without saying a word, just being. However, Lewis says in letters to Malcolm, the greater part of my conscious prayers consist of words. Prayer, like all spiritual work, is not just something we do with our hearts, but with our minds. But to empty our minds of worldly problems, we need to quiet our hearts first, which is why he says, it is not just something we do with our hearts. This, my friends, is the deepest form of prayer. But if we want to express something, a structure can be helpful. I usually start with, Dear Lord, I am sorry for. Because remember, we are on sacred ground here. Search your heart for those dark spots. Where have I failed myself, God, the people around me? What are the obstacles between me and him? If you don't know what to say, ask him to show you. He will show you in time. Forget the idea of an angry and disappointed God. He is the father of the prodigal son, running to meet us. Next, let's pray for each other. We are all facing something, internally, externally, or both. Think on a large scale, without limitations. Think of everyone who is struggling, the sick, the dying, those who have lost hope, and think of the overall balance of good and evil in our world and in our hearts. I believe it doesn't matter so much what we say, for he already knows. What matters is if we truly feel it and if we trust that he can act. Because it is with love and faith that he works, not with words. And finally, we pray for ourselves. As Jesus invites us very tenderly, tell me your fears in the simplest way possible. Tell me what you need. Tell me what you desire. Share with me your sorrows and joys. Pour everything out before me. Lewis says in The Great Divorce, I do not pray to change God, I pray to change myself. I have found that the more we talk about our fears, the more they lose their power until we are no longer afraid of them. It is essential to distinguish between what I want and what I truly need. If you found value in this, like the video, subscribe and answer the question asked in the video. Also, check out this other video above, it will be life-changing. That said, we shall meet again tomorrow.